Yo, what's up? Josh Junta here for Love Science Music at GSI Studios today. And today I'm recording the great Eric Harlan, the drummer, for a track he's playing on. And I'm going to walk you through my drum setup for the day. At the studio, we have a booth and we also have a live room. So when it's just a drum session, what I like to do is uh, put the drums in a booth for a tight sound, but then leave the doors open. Um, so that way I can actually put some mics out in the room so I can get that tight sound or a big open room sound depending on the song. Today I'm just doing a tight drum setup because it's like a pop track. So this is kind of maybe an unorthodox setup, but first thing I decided is I wanted to have this Sony C800 right here, right front and center as like a mono, mono mic in front of the kit. This mic is incredible. It's usually a vocal mic. On drums, it gets like, it's super crispy, super beefy, uh, low end. And I got that right in front of the kit so I can I can pan that mono and that's kind of like the, the core of the drum sound. Then I want like some kind of stereo imaging. So I have the Coles 4038 over top of the kit. And I'm a little bored with like a, a normal stereo pair. So I like to try and mix things up and try different things. So this is sort of like a busted XY setup. I have one kind of pointing towards the snare drum, which is getting the right side of the kit from the engineer's perspective, and the other pointing to the left of the kit from the engineer's perspective. So hopefully they'll be in phase. I'll have to listen to them when Eric gets here and check those out. So they and they also are positioned in a way with the the Sony that they all should be in phase with each other. A snare. I have an SM7, um, which is a little beefier and a little more low end, low mids than say like a 57, which is like a standard snare mic. Yeah, that's the setup. I mean, it's only five, it's only five mics. I'm not micing the toms because most of the times toms just show up nice and loud and clear and balanced in the overheads. Yo guys, so now I'm in the control room here at GSI Studios. You can see we got the API 1608 console. It's pretty baller. And then we got a Studer tape machine. I'm actually gonna be hitting tape on all these drum mics are coming to, they're coming to the board first, to the preamps, and then to any outboard gear, and then to the tape machine. And uh, let me walk you through uh, where all these mics are going in this room. So. The Coles pair over top of the drum kit, I have going to the first API channels, the preamps one and two. And then from there, they're going to, they're both going to a distressor here because I want to kind of thicken up the, the sound, get a little compression, a little saturation. And then from there, the final stop is the tape machine. Or actually it's not the final stop. The final stop is back to Pro Tools. And then the C800, which is that mono mic in the middle of the kit. That's going to a BAE 1073, which is kind of a thicker, darker sounding preamp modeled after the Neve 1073. It's pretty dope. Oh, and then that's going to, after the Neve, after the BAE, it's going to a API 525 compressor, which is kind of a crazy little compressor that compresses super hard which is actually why I'm using it to get a really compressed like uh, level sound on the mono overhead mic. The RE20 on the kick is going to a Neve Shelford, this, this bad boy right here. And then it's going to the Retro 176, also to kind of thicken it up and get a little saturation, a little more gain and fatness out of it. The snare mic, the SM7, is going to this mag preamp right here. And then next to it on the right, you'll see the Pultec uh, 500 series EQ. That's where the top snare mic is going. The bottom snare mic, which actually I forgot to mention that I have that on there. I have a 57 on the bottom snare going to API channel six. So I think that's gonna sound pretty fire. We'll see what. <laughs> 